Saxon course three, we are looking at lesson 100, which is all about the surface area of right pyramids and cones. So the first thing we need to think about is um, looking at our pyramid and what does its net look like? Because that's what we're focused on is that area of each side. So if we had a pyramid of a, a right pyramid of with a square base, we would say, well, our square base and then triangles coming off of each of those. And we can think about that slant height that we learned about just recently. That is the height of each of those uh, triangles on the bottom. So how can we find the area of one of those faces? Well, we would say that the area of the triangular face of one of them is just the length of the side of the base, okay, so the length of our square times the slant height, okay, so the length of the base times the slant height divided by two, just like we would with any triangle base times height divided by two. So if we want to find the lateral surface area of the entire pyramid, we would need four of those triangles. So we would do four times the length of the side of the base times the slant height divided by two. Another way to think about this is just doing the perimeter of the base times the slant height divided by two, okay? So this is our big equation for the lateral surface area of a pyramid. It's the perimeter of the base times the slant height divided by two. So let's find the lateral surface area of this right pyramid. So we would say, okay, we have this crazy pyramid that has a hexagonal bottom. That's okay, because I just want the lateral surface area of this right pyramid. My pyramid has side lengths of five centimeters on each side, and it has a slant height of 10 centimeters. So along one of these sides, my slant height is 10 centimeters. Well, in my formula, I need the perimeter of the base. Well, that means that I need to do five, okay, five centimeters on each of these sides. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a hexagon. So I have six sides of my five centimeters. So that means that I get 30 centimeters is my perimeter. My slant height, thankfully they gave it to me, it's 10 centimeters. So I plug it into my equation and say my perimeter, 30, times my slant height, 10, divided by 2. So I have 300 divided by 2 is 150 centimeters squared because I'm talking about area. Okay, centimeters squared. That is the lateral surface area. That is everything but not including the base. Okay, now when we think about the lateral surface area of a right cone, we have a new formula and we say, well, the area, the lateral surface area is pi times the radius times the slant height. So instead of doing perimeter times slant height divided by two, the lateral surface area of a right cone is pi r s, pi times radius times slant height. So let's try it right here. We have the diameter of our cone being 10, the height is 12, but unfortunately we don't know my slant height, so let's do that really quick. We use, use my cross section and say, okay, well, this is 12 by 5, okay, so half of this, right? So we put it into our Pythagorean theorem and say 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So this comes out to 169 equals c squared. Take the square root and we see that c is equal to 13. My slant height is 13. Well, that helps out quite a bit because all I need to do is say my radius, well, that's half of this right here. We have five, slant height is 13. So the lateral surface area is pi times five times 13. Well, when we work that out, we have five times 13, which is 65 pi centimeters squared. Okay, and we could multiply by 3.14 and get the decimal answer, or we could leave it in terms of pi. Okay, now what would we have to do to find the total surface area? Well, we just find the lateral surface area by saying, well, that's pi r s. Well, to get the total surface area, I would have to add the area of the base. Well, the area of the base is just a circle. So I would need to find the total surface area. Well, I would do my pi r s, that gives me the lateral surface area, plus pi 
r squared. That's the area of the base. So let's plug in what we know. We would say, all right, well, we found my lateral surface area on the other page to get 65 pi plus pi times 5 squared. That 5 coming from the radius of my circle. And we would get 65 pi plus 25 pi. So my surface area is 90 pi centimeters squared. We just add the area of the base, which is pi r squared. Okay, so how do we find the lateral surface area of a right pyramid? Well, we do perimeter times slant height over 2. And how do we find the lateral surface area of a right cylinder a circular cone? Well, we would do pi times radius times slant height. Big formulas that we need to remember. All right, let's practice just a couple more times, or maybe just one more time. Find the total surface area of a square pyramid that has base sides of 5 and a slant height of 4. And then we'll try this next one with a cone. So what we're saying is we have a square pyramid with sides of 5, and we have my pyramid, and the slant height is 4. So when we do this, I want the total surface area, total surface area. That means that I'm going to need my lateral surface area, my perimeter times slant height divided by 2. Then we're going to add the area of the base. Well, that is just my uh, base, or sorry, my length times width. Okay, we'll do length times width. So the perimeter, well, we have 5 by 5 by 5 by 5. So 4 of those 5s is 20 times my slant height of 4, divide by 2, and then we're going to add length times width of my base. That's just 5 times 5, or 25. And we can simplify this to say 20 times 4 is 80, divided by 2 is 40 plus 25, so we get 65 inches squared. That's going to be the total surface area of my pyramid. And then my cone, lateral surface area of the cone, so we have this cone that we say has a diameter of 8 and a slant height of 12. So we're going to leave it in terms of pi. So remember my lateral surface area is going to be pi r s. So we would say pi times my radius is 4 times my slant height is 12. So we multiply the 4 and the 12 and get 48 pi. That's, uh, we are centimeters squared. Now, if we wanted my total surface area, we would take that 48 pi and add to it my pi r squared. So we would do 48 pi plus pi times 4 squared. So we would get 48 pi plus 16 pi. And we would add that up to get 64 pi centimeters squared. That would be total surface area. We just add the base. Well, I hope this is helpful for your homework and for studying.